everyone, Colonel Gas Mask here, and I'm finally doing that Q&A video you've all been waiting for quite a bit of time, essentially almost two weeks. I'm finally here to answer all those questions you've been wanting me to answer for quite some time, and we've got quite a few questions on this uh, video essentially. Although not all of them are related to the Q&A part of the video, they're essentially people saying, yeah, do LEGO Outbreak 3, or I can't wait for LEGO Outbreak 3 to come out. And yeah, I did promise I would essentially do that video once the remake was essentially done. I promise you that I will get to work on it right after the remake is done animating, essentially. Which would... It won't take too long, though. There are still some scenes I initially, initially need to, like, animate, essentially. And I know some people are probably going to be asking me, when is that coming out? Well, I don't know yet. I will probably let you know at some point, but I don't have a deadline for that, essentially. <laughs> You didn't hear that. Well, anyways, I'm finally here to answer all those lovely questions you've been wanting me to answer for quite some time. So let's take a look at some of these questions here. How many outbreak parts are you planning to make? What camera do you use? How long does it take to make one video? Like Outbreak 2. Well, as for the p many parts of like Lego Outbreak I'm essentially doing, I don't know for sure. It might just be five parts, although I'm or perhaps six, but I don't know for sure if I'm going to be, like, doing that many LEGO outbreaks. I might do side stories to the series once I finish off the main series, but as opposed to that many parts I'm doing, I don't know for sure. And as for what camera I essentially use, well, I'm basically using a Samsung Galaxy 2019, I think. I think that's the name of it. Quite possibly. And as for how long the video takes, it really just depends on, like, what your schedule is essentially. If you've got like a um, full-time job you're doing then it might take generally a long time. It could take up to either just like weeks or months depending on how long you want to make the video essentially. So really it's just not really known how long it takes to make a Lego Outbreak video because essentially it could just depend on what your schedule and what you basically do with your time is. Because I don't just do animating during the day, I do other things like walk my dogs, go to my part-time job. And just in case I get sidetracked or something, there might be um, things I have to do that come right out of nowhere. So, who knows exactly. Which LEGO guns do you like? Well, obviously brick arms, essentially. But as for, well, um, the certain gun I like, I don't know, probably an M16, essentially? You've probably seen a lot of them in my own videos. In fact, I've um, got one here from Brick Guns right now. Specifically this one here. Yeah, I'd say that's probably my favourite gun. Can you do a zombie defence video or a D-Day stop motion? Well, I might do a zombie defence video at some point. I have seen a lot of people do those sort of things before. But I'm not entirely sure because right now I've got other projects I need to focus on. And as for a D-Day stop motion, I don't think that's ever going to be a possibility, lads. Because, well, I don't really have that amount of LEGO to really pull it off, essentially. And not to mention, I don't really have any of the boats they essentially use in the D-Day landings whatsoever. Even with the small budget tactics I essentially use, I don't think I'd able be able to... Fuck me, I'm losing the ability to speak English here! As I was saying, I don't really have the ability to pull that off, especially with like what I essentially have. I don't have any of the boats they essentially use in that in that specific battle. So I don't know. I guess it depends if I find any of them on the eBay, at least ones that I can afford. So I don't know for sure. Bro, dude, Battle of Bulge. I don't really have any like white Lego bricks, at least not enough to essentially make that specific battle. I know it was a winter battle, but I don't really have enough, like, white Lego bricks to essentially pull off the scheme of that, essentially. So I'm not so sure about that. Also, what software do you use, and what is your next war animation? Well, I guess it depends on what he initially means. Does he mean stop motion software, or does he mean Adobe? I guess I'll try and answer both of them. Well, essentially, as for the stop-motion software I essentially use, I basically use what is called clay frames, and it's on my phone, essentially. I've been using it since 2015, so it's been around with me, like, for almost five years at this point. 
Yeah, I had a whole bunch of like stop motion apps that my um, parents downloaded onto my phone for me, and I basically checked through them. And Clay Frames was the most reliable, and it's the one I still technically use to this day. And as for editing software, I essentially use well Adobe Premiere Pro. It is very useful when you want to do this sort of stuff. As for my next war animation, I'm actually thinking of doing a um, Warsaw Uprising in the future. But that's going to be for a while once I've done LEGO Outbreak 3 because people have been waiting for that next part in the series to come out and I don't think I want to keep them waiting any further. What camera do you... Oh, fuck me. What camera do you use to make these stop motion videos? Like I said before, Samsung 2019, I think. That's what I use. How long does it take to make an Outbreak video? Like I said before, I essentially don't know. It's, it depends on what your schedule essentially is and what goes on in your time. What will be your next World War II animation? Well, like I said, Warsaw Uprising. That is what I'm essentially planning on doing. And I've always been wanting to do that for quite a while. It's just a fascinating battle in World War II. How the Polish basically started an uprising against the Germans, only to be betrayed by the Soviets. It's a very interesting history matter. Surprised no one really covers it all that much. But I have seen some people do animations on that specific battle, and they're quite fascinating. You should go check them out. What is your favourite LEGO military minifigure? Well, I don't think I've got a specific favourite exactly. I guess it depends on what you mean. Oh, um, I say the um, the German army essentially. This is going to be epic, mate. I'd like Outbreak Free. As for what I'd like to ask you is, why did you do Lego animations? Well, why did I start doing animations in the first place? Well, let me tell you a story. I've always been fascinated with um, these animations since I first discovered YouTube, essentially. I was basically visiting my grandparents' house at the time, and I didn't know that very much about YouTube at the time until I basically asked my grandmother I could, if I could essentially borrow her computer, and she was kind enough to let me use it. So I started browsing the internet like anyone was doing at the time, and I became, I was very, like, a huge big fan of, like, Lego at the time, but I was also quite interested in zombie films as well, although I was too young to basically watch any of the zombie films at the time. But I did get an idea of zombie films from essentially my grandfather, who used to keep talking about them. He would talk about such films like Dawn of the Dead and, of course, um, Le Resident Evil. Yes. Those Resident Evils. Not the games, the god-awful movies. But essentially what happened was that I basically, um was curious to see if there was any Lego zombie films on there. So basically what I did was that I combined two of my favourite things. I combined Lego and zombies together. I typed it up. Wasn't expecting much of a result. And then suddenly, bam, there was just so many results. There were so many, like, stop-motion films related to Lego zombies. And the first one I clicked on was, of course, the iconic Lego City zombie infection, who a lot of you might have seen in the past. It was the first one I ever discovered in my lifetime. And from there I just became inspired to basically do my own in the future. And that's basically why I started doing these sort of things. It was my first introduction to stop motion films and I became fascinated with the medium itself. So that's basically why I started doing Lego animations in the first place. Why do you like putting so much blood and also can't wait to see to see it done. Well, they are zombie films, so of course there's going to be a lot of blood in them, mate. I mean, just keep in mind, zombie films are about fucking gore and violence, mate. They literally rip you to pieces, so that's why there's blood in it. When this animation release, what is with the growl in these comments, man? Well, like I said before, I don't really know when it's going to be released. It could be a while, essentially, because I don't work with a deadline. I just release them when I finish them. What are your plans for the future? Well, I don't know, essentially. Once I'm done doing LEGO Outbreak 3 and um, the remake, of course, I'll probably continue the series onward or do some World War II animations here and there. I guess that's my plans for the future. How do I make an interesting LEGO Zombie stop motion? 
how can I make an interesting set? Now, honestly, that's not really up for me to tell you. You're going to have to try and use your own creativity to essentially do that. What's your favourite type of scenes to animate? Also, I'm guessing that was supposed to be where. Did you get the SWAT shields? I got the SWAT shields from eBay, and as for types of scenes to animate, um, what scenes are you referring to? I don't understand that question. You're going to need to be a bit more specific with me, because I seriously don't understand that. Do you plan on doing more brick films on World War II battles, such as Battle of Moscow, Battle of Bold, Battle of Tobruk, I think that's how you pronounce it, Battle of Wuhan, etc. Well, possibly. I'm not sure about those specific battles, because I might not have the Lego for them, essentially. But I do plan on doing more World War II animations in the future. I have a question about this. Will the people set the police cars on fire and burn down some buildings? Still, thank you for adding this. Keep up the good work. You're welcome, mate. As for that question, I'm not sure how I've got any time to essentially add scenes where the people are burning the police cars. Or buildings, essentially. I don't have that specific budget for that. I don't know, I guess it depends if I've got enough time to start working on it. Can you add a night in LEGO Outbreak 3 hidden to see if people see it? I'm guessing he's referring to the Stormtrooper cameo I had in the second one. Well, I'm not so sure about that now. When is the remake going to be released? Like I said before, I don't specifically know. Ooh, how do you deal with all your fans? And if I can ask another, what got you to start animating? Well, ever since, like I said before, when I came across LEGO Zombies for the first time, that's what inspired me to start animating in the first place. What got me interested in the idea of stop motion animation. And the last question. Now this is done by someone you might recognise. This is a question by Star Wars Studio 100. I didn't expect him to really leave a comment on this video. Let's take a look here. Nicely done, man. I have a question for the Q&A. What was your main inspiration for your Outbreak series? Well, I'm gonna say this, mate. You and Tri Cold Man were my main inspirations for this series. Your work has really contributed to my overall work itself. Honestly, if it wasn't for you guys, I probably wouldn't even be doing this kind of stuff to begin with. Your zombie series has really inspired me to do the Outbreak series in the first place, and you'll probably see that with some of the familiar scenes in it. So yeah, what I'm saying is that you guys were my main inspiration for this, and I want to thank you guys so deeply for that. And also, congratulations on getting that many subscribers, man. I mean, you've managed to, like, surpass... 100,000 subscribers. That's quite an achievement for an animation channel, especially like one like yours. So yeah, thank you so much. So anyways, that's all the questions I've been able to answer, and sadly there was not that many in there. I mean, there's like, oh, 68 comments, to be precise. But some of them, were, they weren't all like necessarily um, asking questions related to the Q&A video, but Regardless of that, I do want to thank you all so much for putting your questions in there, and I hope you all enjoyed this Q&A video, this is the first time I've been able to do something like this, and I might do another one in the future, although I'm not entirely sure when I'll get around to that. As well, I've got still a lot of work to do, I've got that bloody remake I need to finish, and not to mention I'm also working on a um, Smoking the Bandit stop motion, which is... Um, Probably going to be on hold for a bit of time because the fucking weather over in England is absolute shit. You know, rain, rain, this and that. Then goes to bloody hot the next time. Fuck me. It's going to be a nightmare here. But uh, nonetheless, I'm going to start getting to work on um, the remake for LEGO Outbreak. I'm not sure when that's going to be released, but it will be released at some point in this year, hopefully. But nonetheless, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I want to thank you all so much for putting your questions in, and also make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Leave a like, comment, and also be sure to hit that notification bell if you aren't getting any notifications to my next video. Because, you know, for some reason YouTube is not notifying anyone of these fucking videos whatsoever. Yeah, and also I just want to tell you something, if you're planning on doing like a World War II animation, be careful of putting German music in there, because more recently, um, one of my fellow subscribers and animators 
called Armchair Animation had his entire channel taken down because of hate speech, essentially. And it was all because he basically used a um, German song in one of his videos, essentially, despite the fact he got a copyright claim for that. So yeah, YouTube basically took his entire channel down because of hate speech, despite the fact that his animations are essentially related to history, related to World War II. But then again, this is YouTube for you nowadays. They basically are very inconsistent with their policies, and we all know how fucking broken its algorithm is, and gee, I wonder who refuses to fucking fix it. I'm looking at you, Susan Wojcicki. My old fucking clunge munge. Well, yeah. Be careful about what music you're using there. Watch out for the lyrics, because you might have your entire channel taken down. I know it's stupid, but keep in mind, the people who run YouTube refuses to fucking change whatsoever. Well, until it all comes back to biting them in the ass. So yeah, have a nice day, guys, and I'll see you all in the video. Take care.